Hey everybody, welcome back. Chad with Patriot Astro, and today I'm back to talk to you about another Nina plug-in. It's very important to understand if you're running the Nina Nightly 1.11 version and plugins, you need to keep them both up to date. Several of these plugins are made available by people just like you and me, except they know how to code. The plugin I want to show you today is Orbiculum. This plugin adds a new instruction that's available within advanced sequences. If you're still worried about the advanced sequencer, check out some of my other videos. I'll put some links in the comments to get you started. Now with crystal balls, people attempt to see the future or perform scrying. What we're gonna do with the instruction added by this plugin is scry or look forward at subsequent targets in the evening. If we have multiple targets laid out, what the instruction will do as a looping condition, we'll look forward to the next target in order to determine when it's time to end the target we're working on right now and move on to the next one. The way it does this depends on how you apply it. Now, before we dive into this, I wanna remind everyone, please like this video, subscribe to the channel if you've not already, and share this and other videos with your friends. We've had a lot of positive feedback on how some of these videos are helping others, and I think we can reach a wider audience and help even more. All right, let's dive in and see what we can do. You can see as I jump into my Nina installation, I'm already using another plugin. Here I'm using the three point polar alignment plugin to get my polar alignment in place. We're not gonna talk about that one today. If you're interested, go find my older video or the update video on the topic. The plugin we're gonna talk about today is Orbiculum and it's by the lead developer of Nina. This is all about the ability to look forward on a multi-target evening to try to determine when to swap over from the first target to the second target or second to third. And it's all about looking into the future and some of the data about that next target. First, you need to install the plugin. I've already done that here. If you haven't done this before, go to the plugins page on Nina 1.11, go to the available plugins, find the plugin you want in the upper right hand corner, click install. This will almost always, if not always, require a reboot of Nina. Restart the Nina application and you're good to go. Now to use this plugin and the instructions that were added as a result of installing it, I need to go and add a target. And the way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna go into the Sky Atlas and then I'm gonna go into Framing. And then from Framing, I'm going to apply some of the templates that I shared in my last video. So let's go ahead and find our first target. So we're gonna find something that we can shoot towards the beginning of the evening. And in this particular case, I'm gonna use a trick that I showed in an earlier video, and I'll try to link that at the top of the screen here. And I wanna get rid of some of these targets that don't really work for me. So I'm gonna pick a right ascension, and I'm gonna pick an hour here from two to three just to see where I land. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna line up all the meridian flips from two to three on right ascension. Now that that's done, I can see where that falls on my current timeline and I can do a calculation to say I want to move those meridians towards the front end of the evening. Again, I have a much better description in another video of this, but I'm going to go ahead now and filter all of the objects. And in this case, I'm going to do it from 20 to 24 hours of right ascension. Now you can see I've moved everything and only have objects that are at the beginning of the evening. So let's go ahead and pick an object here. And I'm gonna go ahead and pick something and set it for framing. Once I have the object framed, I can go ahead, add target to sequence, sequencer. I'm gonna choose one of the imported templates I shared earlier. In this case, I'm gonna shoot this in mono SHO with offsets. This has been added to my sequencer. So now I'm gonna come back and find my second target for the evening. Now that this is framed up, I'm gonna go ahead and select to add this target to a sequence. I'm gonna choose sequence, and then I'm gonna choose again the same template that I imported in an earlier video. So now I have two targets, but I'm gonna go add my end of sequence to warm the camera and park the scope. So now I've got a fully functional sequence. I've got two targets though, and I need to determine when I'm gonna move from target one to target two. So let's look at target two, the California Nebula that's later in the evening. I can clean up a lot of these instructions because again, being a subsequent target, I don't need to do things like unpark my scope, cool my camera, etc. So I'll just do a little bit of cleanup here and make sure the parts that need to be here for this target are still here, such as slew and center. Now, as far as an ending point for my final target of the evening, I'm gonna set that to nautical dawn. 
And now I'm pretty much good to go. I've got a first target and a second target. I still have the situation to deal with, which is how do I know when to move from target one to target two? Now there's a number of ways to do this already today. I can set a specific time as an example. But what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna use the new plugin and the instructions that came with it. So let's go ahead and open our first target. And now let's look at the instructions and we'll scroll down until we find Orbiculum. You can see there are two instructions here. One instruction will allow us to continue to loop the first target while the next target is below a certain altitude. Or another option is to continue to loop our target while the next target is below its horizon. So basically what we're doing with our crystal ball here is looking forward at the next target so that we can make a looping condition determination based on the next target, based on either its altitude or its horizon. So you can see that if I go back into California Nebula, since I need to know its altitude information, I can click and hold on this line and just kind of drag left and right. And I can start to look at the Y value. That is the altitude of that object. If I go back to my first target, just to get an understanding of when that's in the sky. Right now, that's pretty much in the sky all evening. So what we really care about here for my determination is the second target. So I go into the California Nebula and I start to look that, you know, maybe I could do it as early as 30 degrees. Here I see 37, 39. But you know what? I want to get a little higher in the sky. So let's look at around 45 degrees. That'll be a good time to maybe swap over. So I'm going to go back into my initial target. Once I'm in the initial target, I'm going to go to the looping condition section. And what I'm going to do is add in the new looping condition from Orbiculum to look forward at the next target's altitude. I'm going to remove the previous looping conditions from my template. So all I have is the Orbiculum looping condition. And I'm going to say when the next target gets to 45 degrees in altitude, let's stop imaging this target. And you can see to the right, we have the data. So it says the California Nebula is currently below the real horizon at negative 2.33 degrees, and we're waiting for it to hit 45 degrees. If I minimize this particular part of the sequence and go look at the California Nebula, again, what I can see here is that right now it is below the true horizon. And if I click and hold and go up the uh, altitude line here, I can see that 45 degrees will happen at about this point in the evening. So again, I don't have to use a time calculation. Uh, there are other ways to do this, but this can be a pretty handy way to look forward and maybe something you wanna dump in templates so that for your multi-target evenings, it's just a little bit easier for you to determine when I want to move on to target two or target three. Well, hopefully this video made you want to get your crystal ball out so that you can shoot multiple targets in an evening with a little bit more flexibility on how you move on from one target to another. Remember to like, subscribe, and share with others. And as always, clear skies.